Hey everyone and welcome to MacTuts Plus. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a great looking photo book using iBooks Author. iBooks Author is an application developed by Apple that allows anyone to create interactive textbooks that can be published on the iBook Store. It's available directly from the Mac App Store. To find it, simply search for iBooks Author. It's a pretty big download so it may take a few moments. Once you've downloaded the app, launch it and you'll be presented with the template chooser. iBooks Author shares many similarities with Pages, so you'll notice that you can select a number of pre-built templates to base your textbook or photo book from. I'm going to select Photo Book under the header Landscape with Portrait. I'll explain the relevance of this a little later. As you can see, iBooks Author creates a new document with some pre-filled information. First, Adjust the size of the zoom just so you can see everything on the screen. At the moment I'm going to set it to 75%. This will give me a good overview of what I'm seeing. As the iPad can be used in both landscape and portrait mode, iBooks Author will attempt to reflow the information and any content of the book. This presents two different views and we can toggle how each view looks using the orientation buttons. This shows you a preview of how the book will look depending on which way up the iPad is. Along the rest of the toolbar are options for shapes, text boxes, preview and publish, as well as opening the inspector and accessing any photos and videos that we may have on our Mac. As you can see, it is very similar to the iWork package. Anyone familiar with Pages or Keynote will feel right at home. The first thing I'm going to do is rename our book. To do this, we can simply double click the title here and adjust accordingly. I'm going to call this photo book. We can also edit the title within the preview. I've just added a subheading. This gives a basic description of the book. As it's wrapped onto two lines, you'll notice that the extra text box has moved and is no longer showing. Thankfully, as iBooks Author gives us almost complete control over the layout, I can adjust the text and the background accordingly. Regardless of whether you've specified the book to be landscape only, the front cover will always be in the portrait orientation. This is because the book's preview in the iBooks application is always displayed in portrait, similar to how a traditional book cover looks. We also need to edit the metadata. This is the information if we were to submit it to the iTunes store that allows it to be searched for. To do this, we open up the inspector and simply complete the information, such as author, title, any keyword that may be preferable, and any comments that we'd like to add. Not all of these options are required and not all of them will be searchable on the iTunes or iBook store. However, the more information you add, the more complete the book will be. The inspector also includes the option to disable portrait orientation. This will mean that even if the iPad is used in portrait mode, the book will still be displayed landscape only. This is perfect for a photo book. To make this book our own, I'm going to add my own photos. I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to use some of OS X's built-in desktop wallpapers. These are great and useful for the purposes of this tutorial. Again, if you're familiar with iWork, you'll know that you can simply drag and drop most media elements, such as a photo, directly onto the document. What's more, iBooks Author will also include placeholders for images to be placed to. Here we can drag our picture of the flower directly on top of the original cover. We can also edit the mask, which means we can zoom in on the picture, reposition it, just so we can have it exactly as we want to. You can edit these pictures at any time and you can always come back to them if necessary. To ensure that only the picture moves and not the entire placeholder, it's important to double click the image and make sure the edit mask option appears on the screen. This allows you to then zoom in and reposition the front image without it moving the layout. So I've got constant access to those pictures, I've resized the window. Unfortunately, this means it's having to scroll left and right. To alter this, change the zoom level to fit to width. This means whenever we resize the window, 
the preview will automatically resize, so there's no scrolling. Next, delete the chapter. While it's useful to have some pre-filled information, we want to add a new one from scratch. To add a new chapter, click Add Page, Chapter, and then select the type of chapter you wish to add. Depending on the template you're using, there may be more or fewer options. Here, I've chosen Chapter Photo. Just like changing the title of the book, we can change the title of chapters by double-clicking its name within the sidebar. Again, I'm going to change the cover of the chapter with one of my own images. Again, double-click the image if you wish to zoom in further or reposition it. You can organise chapter content into sections. These are subsections of each chapter. You can add them in exactly the same way as adding a chapter, but select section rather than chapter. Here, I'm going to add another section, and again, renaming it is just as simple as double-clicking the name. Now the section I've chosen has a picture area that's far too small for the picture I want to use. As you can see, some of the picture is cut off, but if I double-click, some of it appears, but is much more faded. This is simply to show us which part of the image will be shown within the image area, and which part will be cut off. This means should you want to position a specific focal point of the picture, you're able to do so. I'm now going to add a page to this section. This allows additional text to appear. I'm deleting the placeholder text, and I'm going to insert some of my own. Watch what happens when the text goes beyond this page. As you can see, it flows to the next page. We can change what the page looks like by adding new pages or changing the template. iBook's author will reflow the information within the page as much as possible in order to fit a template that we select. I'm going back to the original template I chose, and I'm going to add some more images. As you can see, iBooks Author automatically corrects them in order to fit within the template. Even though these placeholders for images are very small, we can still double click and reposition and zoom our own photos. I'm quite happy with this first chapter, so I'm going to add a new one. First, I'm just going to collapse this just to make it a little easier to navigate. Add a new chapter using the same Add Page menu we used before. This time, I'm choosing Chapter Introduction. The only difference is there's an additional text box displayed on the chapter's main cover. iBooks Author is very media heavy, and as you can see, I'm adding quite a number of photos quickly and easily. On a side note, the more images you use, the larger your book will be, so be careful adding too much content for the sake of content. Should you wish to change the picture at any time, you can simply drag another image on top. This will simply replace the existing image. Next, I'm going to add a section. This section is particularly good because it includes a placeholder for an image caption. We can use this to describe the image above. Now that I've added a caption, I'm going to put a picture in of Mount Fuji. Now I'd like the focal point of this image to be the tip. Therefore, I'll reposition it so it looks much better. The table of contents will show a preview of each chapter, along with the image that you've set as its cover. Here, you can see chapter 1 and chapter 2 have different images, and the sections are listed below. By toggling the orientation using the option in the toolbar, we can see what the book will look like in portrait mode. As you can see, the template has been dumbed down in order to fit on portrait. This isn't the best experience for a photo book, but luckily we can disable portrait mode. To do this, open up the inspector and select the option Disable Portrait Orientation. This way, the portrait template is now completely removed from the book. Instead of portrait, 
The book will always be displayed in landscape, regardless of the orientation of the iPad. So far, we've done nothing more but add basic text and photos. Let's use some of iBooks Author's more advanced features and add a photo gallery within one of our pages. I've selected the section I called Mountain, and I've just replaced some of the text in order to make some white space. From the Widgets menu, select Gallery. Just like in Pages where we add a small image, the text will wrap around the image accordingly. This automatically happens whenever we resize it and it begins to clip some text. To add images to the gallery, we have the gallery selected and we can use the plus button within the inspector to add images. Unfortunately, using this method, even by selecting multiple images, does not let us add images altogether. We have to add them one at a time. A much easier way is simply dragging the images directly to the inspector. Simply drop them under the gallery media section of the inspector and they will all be added simultaneously. I'm just changing the layout of the page slightly, just so I can make the gallery a little bit bigger. Now although the gallery only appears as a small image that we can click through, while on the iPad we'd be able to swipe through, iPad users can tap on the gallery for it to go full screen. Even though the images appear small, the original high resolution images are included within the book. We can also free up some space by disabling the caption and if it's displayed, the title as well. The navigation icons are simply for our own benefit and won't be displayed on the iPad finished version. The number count, however, will be. As this is an image gallery, just like we've done previously, we can double click on any of the images to zoom in and reposition in order to find the best focal point. So there we are, an image gallery has been included. We'll look at this shortly. Next, we're going to add another widget, this time an interactive image. I'm just going to clear up some space just so I can include it above this page iBooks Author's advanced layout options spread right to the fundamental text of the page. We can reposition how the text appears and alter where it starts. By simply drag and drop and selecting a few options, we've been able to reposition the text on this page to be much lower. Once you've made some space, use the widgets option and select interactive image. Position this somewhere on the page. An interactive image is a single image that uses zoom to its advantage. We can set specific points and text boxes that, when clicked, will zoom in on that specific area, useful for pointing out minute details in very large images. Simply drag and drop an image onto the widget. From there, we can then edit the interactive elements. Here you can see there's two elements already provided. The way the widget interacts when we're editing it is almost identical to how it works when we're using it. The image zooms out when not in use. Tapping upon any of the text boxes will zoom into a very specific part, and we can set the zoom level accordingly using the scale just below. This means we can specify certain areas, for example, I'm specifying here how clear the water is and how good the sand looks. One of the downsides of the interactive element is that it can be quite hard to adjust when it's in a small space. You need to reposition both the arrow, or the dot where the image is going to zoom into, and the text box. Each of these have to be done independently. You also need to ensure that whenever you move the image, you need to select Set View, otherwise it won't remember the changes and you'll find that when you're zooming in, the image may not be in the place you want it to be. Play around with it and you'll get used to it. Finally, we're going to add a glossary definition. Anything created within iBooks Author has the capacity to include a full glossary. 
ideal for specifying certain terminology. In this instance, a glossary would probably not be best suited for a photo book, but for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm going to add a definition. To do this, we simply select any text or word that we'd like to use within the glossary. Right click and select Create Glossary Term from Selection. You'll see that the box appears and the text becomes bold. Clicking on the text will open it in the glossary. From here we can edit the definition. Glossary terms appear as a pop-up within the iPad. This makes it very useful to explain certain information or use as an alternative to footnotes. Now that our book is finished, let's preview it. To preview a book on an iPad, plug it in and then select Preview from the toolbar in iBooks Author. iBooks Author will automatically send a copy to the iBooks application on your iPad. It will be labelled Proof so that you know it's not a book you've purchased nor one you've downloaded. Tap on the book to open it. As you can see, this is our table of contents. A preview of each section and page is included below. Tap on any of these, or using the text box here, you can tap on that as well. Here's the page with our interactive elements. As you can see, we have the image and the interactive element ready to go. To use it, simply tap on any of the text boxes. When you do so, the interactive element zooms straight in, providing the text box with further information, along with the desired area on the picture. We can swipe through each page, and even tap on the images included, providing a full page preview. The images are high resolution, so they're not just simply scaled up. Now let's check out the page with our glossary and slideshow. As you can see, glossary items are still in bold. Tapping in provides a pop-up view. We can access the dictionary as well as the full glossary index if we want to explore other definitions. The dictionary is particularly useful. If we tap on Glossary Index, the glossary slides down. We're not taken to it for us to go back, it's actually overlaid on the book. Here I'm swiping through the slideshow. As you can see, the cursor buttons that we had displayed within iBox Author are no longer present, and tapping an image will zoom it to full size. We can still swipe through the images. This provides a very interactive element that is extremely useful to have should you want to include a number of images without taking up a large amount of pages. And there we are, by the end of this tutorial, you should have been able to create a great looking photo book within iBooks Author. Thanks for watching this tutorial from MacTouch Plus.